Welcome to the Burley Fishing Podcast, a podcast for outdoors men and women from all walks of life and skill levels. Join my friend Paul Glass and I as we dive into outdoor topics ranging from just getting started with fishing and hunting to gear reviews to special guests and interviews. Along the way, we'll address some fun and, you know, sometimes controversial topics. And as always, we're going to engage you, the audience, with questions, feedback, and shout outs. This is the Burley Fishing Podcast. Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Podcast. I am Jeff Burlingame. I'm here joined with Paul Glass, and we are going to be talking about taking fishing from a hobby to an obsession. How does that happen? And this is a part two, really, of our first episode of our podcast being part one. If you guys missed that, go back wherever you guys go to your podcast, check it out, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you're at. Uh, Episode one, talking about just getting into fishing in the first place. How do you get started with it? Uh, What kind of gear are you needing? Uh, What are the basics? You know, how do you not make mistakes or get into trouble uh, with your spouse, significant other? And how do you just have fun with it? Today, we're going to follow up on top of that, talking about how it goes from a hobby to an obsession, uh, why we put the hours in on the water, why we stay out when the struggle is real, why we stay out in the heat, the cold, what, you know, when we're sick, whatever it is, what gets us to just really stick with it. And again, I'm joined here with Paul Glass, uh, and we are talking uh you know, an extension of another channel that we have here, which is the Burley Fishing YouTube channel, which was the initiation of this, uh, I guess, social medium, if we want to call that. And now we're branching out. It's an adventure. It's (laughs) It's an adventure. So if you guys are not currently subscribed to or following Burley Fishing on YouTube, go check that out. Uh, You can also check us out on Instagram at Burley Fishing or on Facebook. You can check out our page, facebook.com backslash Burley Fishing. Without further ado, let's dive in, Paul Glass. All right. Before we get into the meat and potatoes, so to speak, the first question I have for you that I want to kick this off with is if you knew that you were going to have your last meal, if your next meal is going to be your last meal, what would it be? (laughs) Oh, man. That's uh, that's a tough one. I try to think about like some of my favorite foods. I gotta say, and this maybe this is unpopular uh, choice, <laughs> but uh, I really really dig this sushi burrito uh, that I've really only seen at very few places. But the place that does it the best is this place in Grand Rapids. There's multiple places that have a sushi. Burrito. Uh, surprisingly so, yeah, surprisingly so. But uh, there there is a restaurant called Jaku. Uh, sushi shout out to these boys uh they have two... at the end of the day you just know that you're not going to deal with those consequences and so you're fine with the <laughs> there's no consequences <laughs> it's worth it's worth every single piece <laughs> but dude yeah the uh it's specifically the i think it's the umi it's like all the the fresh seafood and like there's some fish row in there and dude, it's it's money it's like picture burrito with like no tortilla but it's still all that rice but it's just wrapped in uh your like seaweed wrapping I'm, pic- I'm picturing a guy who accidentally made a sushi roll 10 times too big and doesn't have a knife to cut it and is now selling it as a burrito. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Okay. He just sliced it in half. He yeah. was just like, boom. And he was like, yeah, this burrito. With a cleaver. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's so good. What about you, man? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a no brainer. It's not even close. Little Caesars, $5, hot and ready. You need treat. <laughs> with half, <laughs> half a bottle of Frank's Red Hot rolled up like a sleeping bag. And then, <laughs> you go, and then I would have a the tallest McDonald's Coke available. <laughs> and, uh, but, and then maybe some, maybe some ranch from Jet's Pizza. And I think that's, I think that's it. I think you're good. I, I love that we we both could have done any anything like any delicacy <laughs> in, the, in the world, and we both chose something valued at under ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> could literally be appeased at pretty much any day. Yeah, yeah. This this is who we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the other the, what I, what I will also say is I want to hear from whoever may be listening to this podcast at any point. I want to hear where your last meal is. You can get as specific as you want. Please get specific. Um, so as we, as we move on, um, you know, we kind of talked, uh, Jeff, you already kind of touched on and talked about how you get into fishing, you know, different ways that you can get into it, the kind of the best ways to start gear basics, right? Like if you have, you got like a hundred bucks, how do you get into it? 
And then we talked about how you kind of, if it's like your thing, you'll start to see the signs of the, 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 the obsession disease sneaking in. <laughs> that, that you're, still, you're still, you're still in terms of evolution, you're, you're still early on. I think what you're going to, what you'll start to notice is like, you'll, you'll start getting bored with like, okay, like I've done, I've done X, Y, Z, like a bunch of times. Like I've bang fished the same river like 300 times. I, you kind of like will naturally morph into doing all of the things that you're not doing when you start. So no matter how you start, no matter what it is, if you start as a, you know, a fly fishing guide, at some point you're going to start to branch out. If you start, you know, minnows, hooks and bobbers, eventually you're going to probably start expanding, expanding your horizons. Um, some of the ways that I know, like the way it went for me, like when I first started fishing was in the river for the most part, and it was all catch and release, like hundred percent. Yeah. And then I caught, um, one day I caught a ton of bluegill and like, I was just hammering them. And I was with somebody who lucky, who yeah. is like obsessive about like keep like catching, keeping. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, I tossed like three fish back and he like dressed me down. Like, lit me <laughs> what are you doing? He lit me up. And I was like, huh? Okay. And so <laughs> like, you know, that day we kept a ton of fish, we ate all of them. And it was like light bulb just like went off. And I was like, this is sweet. And then that morphed into like, I now have like a bass, a rep, and I have like a recipe for like bass cakes, which are super good. I have like, we did the hotel fried like a little, a little while back. Um, we pickled, um, pickled pike, which is like super underrated. We even, I have a recipe on my refrigerator that I need to do catfish sausage. It's going down. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. It's going, it's going down. <laughs> um, it's yeah, I think that's backyard man <laughs> <laughs> i will have to deal with those consequences but that's okay <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> but then like you can also i mean I, I think a lot of people what it starts with too is like you start discovering like the other species that are out there like a lot of people start with like bass panfish right mm-hmm. but then all of a sudden it turns into you know you, you fish with somebody else and you realize that like oh catfish are available 10 feet from me or like a lot of oh, they're, the they're there man you just gotta find out how to catch them <laughs> the whole south has like like gar pike right not what well, we call them gar pike but like just like gar or like long nose gar um yeah. if you're on if you go to the coast on a trip you're like oh wait you can just in in florida you can like tarpon whatever bonefish like you name it um yeah. and then there's like all of the there's like other planets of fishing that you start to get, like fly fishing right for me that was like literally another universe that i <laughs> like got like stepped into on accident um and then obviously you with the the kayak fishing right dude yeah that that was totally different well i mean i've I've played all those games too you know like the live bait worm and bobber and then you know you introduce uh starting to get into plastics and like other i think you you introduced me to like mystery tackle box and the monthly boxes and i think you were like you would just stop doing them <laughs> and you're like, yeah, it was, there was this thing. Uh, don't do it. And then I did it and I've done it <laughs> ever since. And now I have like three boxes. Uh, you have a closet full of boxes. Yeah, I do. I, I've dumped them every month or so, but I mean, a lot of times it's crap. A lot of times it's crap. Uh, I will say like one recent one that I've been uh, working with a lot more is monster bass. And I think they, they crush it in terms of you'll use everything in this box. Uh, so I, I've been happy with that for as long as that's been running. Uh, and I fish with it a, a ton, man. So, I mean, if you can, if you're looking to like stock up or you're like, uh, what the heck do I buy? Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, I think, okay. The evolution of the box. The evolution of the Char- box. Charmander, Charmander was someone bought it for me as a gift super genius gift by the way like genius gift idea for like somebody else like because you you don't have to like pick anything you just like it will just show up and be like a cool thing yeah like, someone bought one for me i can't, i think it was my wife this is mtv yeah yeah, yeah 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 and it was like at first i was like oh my god like this is great like i just get cool stuff and yeah. then like but that was way early on like that was like at the be- that oh, was like that, the beginning, right that was like changed that was, yeah. and then and then eventually, you know, that membership ran out. I was like, well, I kind of liked getting just like, you know, 
four or five lures and a couple of like plastics every week like or every month like that was sweet and then so i did the i think like pro came out a, like a year later yeah. and i was like ah sure i'll just do it like whatever like I, th- this is spent money anyway so i don't care yeah um, but like the great the that was like the charmander and when i what, what i realized was happening was you know they have a limited assortment so like at some point in like a six month period unless you switch from like the bass box to like the you know saltwater box or uh, the the walleye box or whatever the ice box the random box <laughs> that... <laughs> you, you, yeah you end you end up the catfish box was legit i got that three times and i felt yeah. like i was like stocked up like i felt like i had like some stuff that i just definitely didn't have but the best part about it i will say there were a bunch of things that i got that i one never would have bought for sure yeah. never would yep. go to the store i would never go to the store and buy the mondo worm like, no <laughs> yeah, i have yeah. this i have a i have the like 11 inch spook or whatever it is it's like a foot long it's <laughs> long as, would yeah. never never own it i've thrown it at the cottage yeah would never own it otherwise I, there was a there's these really cool little like they're like you essentially screw in a spinner kit to the back of any plastic and there's just like there was like a pack of three or four of them similar to what you're holding in your hand <laughs> this came in last month's mtb it's called a knuckle bait <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was like i would have never on it. bought this yeah they're like a I, duck. It's like a, like have, a duck. haven't thrown it yet it's got this freaking giant hook yeah, this is big. That, that's on a spinner bait. That is a monster hook. It's big, but yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Like these it, are things. It, it introduced so like they have yeah they have this catfish hook, um, and it has like a, a plastic tube that rides above it, like like I don't know four inches above it maybe, yeah. um, and you just stick it in the dip bait. So dip bait is like a you know a gooey, unbelievably terribly smelling you know goop, and oh, but it has like a hole. Stuff. It has little holes in it, so you just like dip that in the and it you dip the tube into the, the, the bait and then you, you know, just huck your lure out there and it glows in the dark. So it's like a per, it's a phenomenal night fishing. Never would have bought one. I look at them, they're at Myers, like standard, I don't know, like a Publix or whatever for wherever you are, but, or like a Walmart, it's basically a Walmart. They have them, they're like 50 cents and, and they have a nice treble hook on them and they work and they come with like pre-rigged. I'm like, yeah, never would have bought one. Use them all the time at the cottage now. Um, but yeah, so that was like level two, level three. I went pro for a while. And then I just got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm spending $40. I have gotten a couple of really shitty crankbaits and uh, I think I'm out. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I got some of those, you know, those like, what are those? I think it's a Japanese. Okay. Somebody's going to listen to this episode and be like, lucky brand is out of like Louisiana or something. <laughs> I don't know where lucky I don't know where that lucky brand. No, 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 no. All that shit is from like, yeah, it, it's it's from Asia. It's Asia. I don't know. Anyways, I feel like a really ignorant person right no, now. No, well, it's Asian Asian country manufacturers, but it's like it's like relabeled, right? They're not. What I received was not of the highest quality, and no. I got like a couple of those, and they're like, "These are fifteen dollars." I'm like, "Well, someone's pissing away twelve ninety five because these yeah. are like a buck fifty. So yeah. it was yeah. just yeah. So I guess, and then so then I was out, but. Dude, for a I, I, two or three years, I was like, I was hooked in. They were nice. Yeah, same here. I still get it, so I still have. Uh, I, got, I mean, I've watched you get a lot of them. Have you Have you watched my unboxings? Uh, go check out Burley Fishing. Hold on, no. I didn't notice. Do they still have the measuring? Do they? Still yeah, it's have on the it? it's on the inside. All the boxes you, are all the have same. Have you ever used it? No, not once. So that's what we're gonna. That's that's going on the check. We're gonna cover the checklist, right? Yeah. No, we're gonna we're gonna catch a. What do you need? Like a sixteen-inch bass? Is that what it is? Uh, let's here. I was gonna save this for the episode, but not uh, too bad. This is a pre-preview. Don't 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 tell anyone. I'm not gonna look at the baits. It's part <laughs> of the surprise. The I'm looking at the baits. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 look. So this, yeah, this, this goes to twenty-two, son. All right. Well, I guess we have two inches. Yeah, dude. We need to catch a big old fish, and we need to slap it on there. It's got some keeper requirements on here. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I know what Michigan's is, but yeah. All right. Well, there's some shit I'm not gonna fish with in here. I can tell you that. Both of both of us. <laughs> Prequel <laughs> to the sequel. That's what we're gonna do. No, we need to. Uh, we that's okay. I'm adding that. To the list. All, right. All right. We'll come back to that. But yeah. So like, 
uh, so here, here's, here's what I'll say. So we're talking about like how fishing goes from hobby to obsession or fishing, fishing goes from this thing that you did one time with some guy or some gal that you knew that fished and they were like, Hey, come out with me. You're like, cool. I'll do this thing. And you're like, ah, no, it's, it's, not, it's not so bad. Uh, but then you try it again and then you find something that really like fans that flame for you and like keeps you going back out there. And I'll be honest, like, I think for me, um, you know, a, a lot of people like collecting, right? And I think you know where I'm going with this. Like, I can see your rod collection right behind you. Yeah, it's, it's right there. <laughs> so like a lot of people like to collect things. And, um, you know, part of the joy of collecting is like, you know, keeping it in good condition and like organizing it. And like, this is my comic book shelf. And these are my mm. video games. And stuff okay, don't like make fun of those things. What? <laughs> Just kidding. <Go> ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Did I? No. Well, I'm a total nerd. Uh, but like, I, I think for me that applied mostly to fishing and it was like getting these monthly boxes. Like these are unique baits and they'll have like, you know, unique colors you can't buy at the store. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. And then, you know, you get, different kinds of plastics you don't even see in the store in these like, you know, maybe up and coming brands, right. Uh, depending on where they're coming from, but you need to try new things, like you said, but you also start to, uh, you know, stock up, right. So you start to fill those tackle boxes and then you value. More, yeah. And then you need more tackle boxes and then you get more and more tackle boxes. And I just dropped a video on early fishing today. <laughs> that was about, uh, you know, tackle boxes and I have a crap ton of them, but part of like the, the joy for me, what gets me through the winter, for example, part of my obsession is organizing those tackle boxes and like you trying to move. figure out how I'm going to fit them all into my kayak and like getting better kayak organization. And like, to me, it's like this, uh, it, it, it's my collecting thing. Uh, and that's what brings me a lot of joy out of it. Yeah, yeah, I'm total order. I'm a fishing order for sure. <laughs> well, how many? Okay, I don't actually. I feel like I don't know if it was Nickens, one of the one of the, one of the field and stream writers wrote a wrote a or an, um a con, like a column and, and it was like it literally like struck me down. He was like, oh, like it was a it was like a line in one of his columns, and he was like, oh yeah, I am reorganizing my fishing tackle for the sixth time this season. Um, it's actually never been organized though, and I was like, dude every single like every time we're about to go on a trip right like if we're yeah. going wherever it doesn't matter ice fishing it doesn't matter i literally spent i grabbed my that huge cabela's green the magnum the magnum bag and i it's got like you know four trays in there and like it's got all like it has 75 percent of what i own i take the whole thing out it has just been organized after the last trip we went on i take the whole thing out Really I literally nice. take everything out of it. I re I restring and re rig like at least two rods, and then I swap. Out, I'll change for no reason at all. I'll change the rod reel combo for like a bunch of shit, and then I will literally reorganize every leaf Colorado leaf blade all the way up to like every <laughs> single, like every single crankbait that I own, and I will I will obsessively organize it. And then you know what I end up doing. I take three of those boxes, I slam them underneath the seat of my kayak, <laughs> I shove as much shit as I can in my waterproof bag, and then I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go. Like, a hundred percent. You would you wouldn't be able to tell this from what Paul is saying right now, but his <laughs> truck and his kayak are like seemingly the most disorganized things I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. Because there's just like lures strewn about the floor of your <laughs> kayak. Like, how are you not stepping on that? You're barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> there's just like rods hanging out of the back of his truck and like <laughs> under his seats in, in the in the crew cab. <laughs> there's like five reels like right under my cat. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. We well we went ice fishing and there was a rod you didn't even use that was just like under your passenger seat in the crew camp. And I was like, what, what's this little guy doing here? <laughs> no, rad. I no, I mean, but like literally you could like you could do you could do a whole episode on like how because I have like a I'm and organizing. Oh my god. I know, like, I know where every, all my stuff is, and I know yeah. what I have. And Same. then the worst part of organizing is you're just making a shopping list. You're like, oh, I only have, <laughs> I only, I only, have, I only, I only a hundred of these in green. I need two hundred in orange for sure. A hundred square bells and only twenty five red ones. Okay. I need more red ones. It's spring <laughs> season. <laughs> I was just, at, I, I was just at Dick's, um, and they had like a, 
what, what sale was it? Oh, they had so. Oh, they had the sale bin. I think I told you about. They had like a sale. Oh, bin. the sale bins. Like, like one thing for full price, which was like ten dollars. You know. Like, uh, here's what's in the sale bin at mine though: is uh, the double plopper, which is the biggest garbage bait of all time. Oh, no, that's so much plopping. That's too much plop. <laughs> I was an eleven inch spook. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's that's like close second but it's like it's like that the the only thing i would have got out of there is you usually see like the yozuri bait balls or like the the stick bait that's like the got nine eyes on it fish. yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. like that right now that would be great but like most other things in that bin are just absolute crap trash, trash, trash. Nothing, i, would I agree but i'm i'm in there pawing through the trash and um they had they had um some of the flat <laughs> pawing through the trash like a raccoon in the back of the dick sporting goods yeah bro <laughs> yeah bro <laughs> i'm not about that <laughs> so, yeah. they had um they had they had the old storms you know the ones they did in flat color like a mat almost oh like, yeah they on them at all they had a yeah. bunch of those and then they had a bunch of trolling the fire tiger like color stick baits um uh, rapalas and then they had uh i don't know a bunch of other all crankbaits of which I have a thousand. And, um, and <laughs> I never I, have too many, I guess. You can't. I forgot that I bought all those. And then like last week I got an email and it was like, hey, we want you to review your, your purchase. And it was <laughs> like, I, you go down the list. You're like, I did what? I was like, dude, I'm like 38 stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I dude, I, that hits me in the feels. I totally get it. <laughs> What I mean, I guess so. What others? I guess okay. So, and that, we're not even gonna talk fly fishing because that we don't have enough time. There is not enough time. And, but I, I feel like we got into the uh, the the baits only episode here. Yeah, <laughs> you so can what, tell why we're obsessed. Like that's a big part of it is like getting the baits, organizing the baits. But obviously, fishing is about catching too, right? So, like, yeah. what <laughs> to it to an extent. Um, but like, I, okay. yeah. So if you're in the middle, right? You're you're kind of in that middle phase where you're like trying other things. What are some of the other things that you're like, oh, I think I'm going to try X, Y, or Z. Like we talked about catching, keep cleaning fish. For me, cooking is a big one because like, I know, hey, my wife is like, mm, that sucked. And I'm like, oh yeah, that wasn't, <laughs> I, I air ball. And then like, and you want my, wife, my wife doesn't like any fish, no freshwater fish. What if I she fried it? it all. What if I fried it? Well, like we ate that bluegill and she was like, eh. Take it or leave it. And I was we like, do we fry? We didn't wrong. I fried it. Oh shit. You left all those bags with me. I fried yeah, them up. Obviously. What if I did your recipe and we did some I'm Frank's? Gonna, it was delicious. I'm she was do, wrong. It's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do she'll eat the bass cakes. Just don't tell her the bass until she's done. She wouldn't know the difference. She wouldn't be like, ew, bass. <laughs> point. So you tell her whatever you want and I'm gonna make them. Those are good. They're like they're like crab cakes, but they're bass, pike, and bluegill, like all mixed together with like cornmeal. Yeah. Super good. All I right, mean, so. I, I'm pumped. You just got to convert <laughs> that lady. <laughs> so yeah, there's there's that piece of it, and then um, targeting different species, and then like getting into fly fish. I, I also will say like you could do a, nut, a whole entire episode on like what your options are based on where you are. You and know, we will the world, right? So if you're in Michigan, which is where we are, you've got the Great Lakes. So there's like the trolling and jigging for walleye. There's the whole like fly fishing and trolling and drifting spawn sacks for like you know salmon and salmon, trout, like trout yeah. yeah like that whole deal there's people who only exclusively target pike basically me there's they're, a lot of like specific fishermen yes. i would say a lot of a lot of live bait fishing a lot of specific fishermen a lot of people that just wait for salmon season steelhead runs like trout yeah the people only ice fish yeah I mean, I don't get it, but so for, so for, for me, it's like, I, I can't wait to figure out how to fish all year round. Like once you introduced me to ice fishing last year, it changed everything. I was like, oh, I don't have to wait for five months during Michigan winter, yeah. you know, and I'm not freaking out anymore. I'm like, I got to fish a whole bunch and then I got to organize tackle a whole bunch. And then I spent a lot of money on my kayak today. I'm like, I'm ready for spring season. Let's do this. So let me ask you this, because I'm, I can tell you like almost specifically one of the things that like we haven't done enough of that i want to do more of that's also not going to be on my spring checklist but will be on my summer checklist okay what's that extended trips because we don't like kayak. because we own kayaks so you remember like a river trip yes like we tried to plan and then like failed tried to do, to do and god it was full of e coli <laughs> well, okay it was multiple things one you're okay 
I died the first day of the alternate yeah, plan. We yeah. were we were two miles or five miles from my house. It was like it went. We had it was like cool temps. It was in like the sixties, fifties, like relatively cool. And like that, literally the the exact day that we were like, oh, we should go, you know, just stay local and hit the local and do. It was a hundred plus, and the yeah. humidity was like through the roof. My grass all died in two days. <laughs> And yeah. you you had some sort of disease. I literally you were sick, and the Grand River was sick. <laughs> yeah, and the, so there was that factor, which is probably a good thing we didn't go. But yes, and the Grand River had a full eye warning. The flooding we were I was tying flies that weighed like an ounce and a half because like the yeah. Grand, the Grand River was like. You remember we drove by that we so we scoped out one of the spots that we were going to camp at. Mm-hmm. The whole river side, you could, there was like a river walk that that was just the river. It was totally flooded. Yeah, no, it's uh, the flooding all of last year sucked a lot around. I didn't, I fly fished once last year. Like there's nowhere to wade. I couldn't wade anything. That was brutal. But yeah, so extended trips. I would, that is like for me, that to me, that is like the part of me that's still in that middling section of like, I just want to try new stuff. Dude, I love having a kayak is phenomenal because it opens up that opportunity to just like, be in wilderness you're not worried about gas you're not about you're not making like a ton of noise you're not like polluting with noise you can you can have a small fire you can have a good time you can right right on your own you can fish at night like no problem and like the river's a nice natural way for you to not have to do like a shitload of work all day paddling right if right. you're like you have a paddle and like bringing to, to me i love like the camping aspect of it like bringing your own food like catching some of your own food like ha- like i love cam- like i just i just we oh, we didn't even talk about hunting and fishing stuff for the week i went to rei and i was like we'll get there <laughs> went to rei and i was like dude i'm i'm like stocking up on like camping gear and blowing my dividend on base layers like i enjoy that aspect of it like because it's more than just like oh we're gonna catch fish it's like no i'm going to catch fish and i'm going to eat and i'm going to like catch a whole bunch of fish and i'm not gonna eat and I'm going to like be outside for like five days or a week or whatever. <laughs> like that, like that, I get jazzed up about that. That's like so much fun. And like that to me, that's like the, the evolution of what we're doing. Like, I don't know what I do right now. Right. Like, yeah, sure. I'll go fishing all damn day. Like that's, I love doing that, but getting an opportunity to be like, essentially do a fishing backpacking trip, like on the water. So much fun. Yeah. So I think for a lot of people, uh, and, and anybody listening that's in that position of like maybe getting into this though, if we're talking hobby to, we'll, we'll, we'll start calling it healthy obsession, uh, yeah. so much healthy, better. healthy obsession. Uh, but anyways, if you, yeah, if you're trying to go from hobby to healthy obsession and just like really get into this thing, it's not like we're trying to become pro fishermen or anything. Like we're just trying to, uh, wow. enjoy ourselves and find the, the aspects of this sport that we enjoy so much. So I would say like, you know, it, it can go from, you know, the collecting the enjoyment of the gear, like there's nothing wrong with that if you're okay with spending the money. And then it goes to like, yeah, like you said, exploring, uh, you know, different species that you can catch. And that becomes a lot of fun to kind of dive down those rabbit holes because you fish differently for even smallmouth versus largemouth. And then you get into bigger fish species that you can catch in freshwater or saltwater and they get, you know, giant sometimes. <laughs> Driper, musky, like... Yeah. Fish, yeah. I mean, even around us, yeah, we, we've got all the way up to sturgeon, right? So it's like, oh, you, you can fish some real big fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you can do all sorts of cool stuff with that. And then you get into, uh, you know, eating them. <laughs> uh, so trying different recipes there and exploring that. I think it's cool to be able to, you know, uh, we'll, we'll take your example here. Like you make your own lure, for example, not that you have to do this. If you make your own lure, you catch a fish and then you cook and eat that fish. Like that's a pretty amazing experience you can right? step it up even better shot a deer take the <laughs> tail the tail from that deer and make a lure out of it and shot. then catch a fish on it and eat that oh my god and that that is the uh piece you're watching you're watching, my, you're watching me go from uh charmeleon to charizard right there right there that's charizard <laughs> yeah so like <laughs> you you go like you, you try to find these aspects that you really enjoy and then you just got into the next one which is one of my favorite pieces too this is what really you know cemented this obsession for me it was like the outdoors like just getting outside uh for me it was you know stress of work or or family things going on or whatever and it's like you can just go be outside and and like I know some people like to, I guess, listen 
uh, to music and stuff with your earbuds in while they fish. And like, I prefer not to, I, like, I just like nature sounds and, and silence. So like the lake by my house is all right most of the time, but if there's a ton of people there, I'll go to a more secluded lake. There's a few lakes around me where there's like one house, if any on them, mm-hmm. and it, it doesn't get the fishing pressure that this lake gets. So I'll go to them on purpose. If I'm like, man, I need just like a really quiet, mellow day. And then I just focus in on, and, the, and this is like the next big piece, right? It's how do I figure them out today? And that, that was the puzzle that can drive you insane on some days for yeah. sure. If you're like, this doesn't make any sense. I'm throwing everything that should be catching fish, but isn't catching fish. Uh, but that, that puzzle is something that I enjoy so much. Every time I go out fishing, it's like, I'm going to go through, you know, every bait I own if I have to, but I'm going to catch a fish mm-hmm. and I don't always do that. But a lot of times catch I do. Go through all your baits. What's that? Catch a fish or go through all your baits. What don't you do? Uh, I don't always catch a fish as I go through all my baits, but I will, I'm damned if I won't quit. <laughs> rack, rack them up. <laughs> rack them up, man. Uh, I do. I will plow through those baits until I figure them out. Um, but that's, that's so much fun. Just trying to like, it's not as easy when you branch out from the worm and the bobber, right? Uh, casting that off the bank and cast just about anywhere. I mean, mm. uh, or around the shore, if you're in the season, like it's spring it's summer, it's fall, you're going to catch a fish, mm. but you start using artificials and you got to know where the fish are. Yeah. Like sometimes depending on the water clarity, the weather around, you just got to hit them right in the face. Mm-hmm. So you really got to know where they are, but just figuring out kind of what they're reacting to that day or what they want to bite. That's so much fun. Oh dude. Yeah. The, the puzzle is like, I, I still, I, I put that in the middle category of evolution though. Like if there's three stages, I'm still putting that in the middle. Cause I'll say yeah. this, like that last, like, for me, when you're kind of, um, when it kind of comes full circle for me, it's like when you've, um, when you become a mentor for somebody else. Yeah. Well, once you can figure them out, then we, we start talking about putting them on fish, yeah. right? So that, that mentorship is like first step. What do you got to do? And you got to introduce somebody in a gentle way <laughs> to fishing. Cause, uh, I, I could say I've done this really wrong. Um, I took a buddy out fishing. Your kids aren't, it's not possible. You already ruined it. <laughs> with my kids. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a little better with my kids, but I took a buddy out. Uh, one of the guys that bought my gym, Mike, and I took him out for like 10 hours on the job. Oh, I guess a casual job. I was like, I was like, no, we're not done yet. No, we're not done yet. And I felt bad because I was just like plugging small mouth. <laughs> but he did. He got one. He got one for the day. But like I was trying. But you know when you're like, okay, I got him dialed. Ned rig's working, man. Put on this Ned rig. Cast right there. And like they don't. What's that? Your tunnel vision. Yeah, exactly. I was like, this is working. Do it. And then he did it. And then it didn't work. And I was like, wait, why? <laughs> so it's like there's the puzzle has changed and the puzzle is no longer a five piece puzzle. It's a thousand piece jigsaw. And you're just like, what the frick did I just miss, man? Now it's one of those puzzles with no edges (laughs) and it's all white. (laughs) Oh God, That's how that day went. But I kept catching them and I was like, try this, try this. And it didn't work. And like, that sucks as when you're trying to fill the role of the mentor and it doesn't work. It's like, yeah. just pack your bags and leave, man. I should, I should have, we should have bailed earlier. Or like change your plan. Yeah. Like do something different just, than what I was sit, trying. Sit down and be like, yeah, we probably, uh, we probably screwed the pooch on this one. Maybe we'll just watch the water for a few minutes. Let's eat this well, candy. Let's eat this we, candy bar. We went to that, we went to that dam, right? The dam's a, oh, yeah. And it was during high flood waters. So mm-hmm. it was a pretty raging dam. But that's where I caught a uh, near five pound smallmouth. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, we should go home now. Okay. Oh, of course you were. <laughs> Remember that? So uh, the first time we went on, I think we already told the story, but the first time we went on your home lake, I was like, that was like one of the first times we went fishing together. Yep. Uh, the bluegill smash. Yeah. But the interesting thing about us, we started fishing deep for like bass. Like that's what we started with. Cause we're like, oh, there's yeah. got to be bass in here. Didn't catch anything. And in my brain, I was like, dude, this is going to fizzle out like so quickly. Like what, what do I know will work? I grabbed a okay. small rod. I grabbed a small rod. We went and started, yeah. hitting, we hit that tree. And then we were, I was like, dude, we can get on bluegill in the shallows. So that, that's that gentle intro, right? It's like, just put them on fish, man. Like they, they don't have to catch a bass today 
we can do it another day. Let's do something easy like panfish. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you definitely have to do that with kids, right? Because kids desire like quick, easy action. It's like, put the worm on the bobber. I'll put it on for you. Cast it right there. They're just practice casting, you know, just get better at that. Get comfortable with that. That's fun for kids. And then to feel the tug on the line and they almost can't screw it up because you got those little tiny bait keeper hooks. And it's like, if they slurp the worm, they got the hook, you got the fish, you win. And that is the way to play it. And I've done that with my kids and they just, you know, uh, my daughter asked me all the time, Emma does. So Emma always wants to go out. Um, Olivia, not yet. The first time I took her out, she threw her rod in the water. <laughs> not, not on accident, on purpose. I was like, you want to fish some more? And she was like, no. <laughs> Which one, it. When we went to the trout farm, which one of them saw the fish's head getting chopped off? Oh no, uh, Emma. Emma's the one that's sensitive oh. to that. It was probably Emma. Emma's our Hufflepuff man. Emma is if she, if she hears that an, an animal is injured or something happens, yeah. even if it's like pretend, no. uh, she freaks out. Man, she oh, she doesn't care if people die. The, the, the sociopathic tendency here is that she'd rather people die than sweet, sweet animals. We walked, we walked into this place and it's like a trout farm. And so, you know, people catch trout and then you have to keep them. So they're painful too. Yeah. So they're processing fish and we walk in and we're paying and we're like, we're like Oh yeah, can, we'll take the, you know, so many worms and while the girls get in the worms, we're standing there and like the fish cleaning area is like right behind the front counter. And this dude has this huge, huge rainbow trout slaps it on the table and then like <laughs> raises a gigantic cleaver and just whap head right off and it was just like i look over and she's just like <laughs> it was like it was like the little mermaid when the I chef it, <laughs> le poisson le poisson <laughs> he's just like it was like, it was like, it, it was like uh, when you know Bambi's buck daddy dies, but like you, you watched the slaughter happen. It was brutal. I was like, Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God. So, yeah, that wasn't ideal. But yeah, no kids. I mean, I think we're very fortunate. My um, wife's family has a place and it's on phenomenal water. And there's, you know, the, the break wall is like the backyard, like the, yep. that's where the seawall is. And it's like ideal, ideal setup. Talk, it's the best because you can, you just walk over, you show them how to put the worm on the hook or you have them do it or whatever, you know, whatever age they're at, you throw the bobber out and then you put a bell on it and walk away. And everyone's just kind of like idly waiting for the bell to go off. You, you can, can do whatever you want. around. You can, yeah. all the adults are having dad pops and everyone else is you know, <laughs> just doing whatever kids do outdoors. And then and everyone's just like booking it over to the break wall yes. to see what they got. Right. And like, that's what awesome. a, like what a phenom i mean it, not everyone's gonna have that opportunity but like if you think about that as like the perfect scenario it really kind of is because they're entertained by whatever it is they're doing they're not just staring at the bobber on those days that are slow but then they still get the excitement of like catching their fish maybe they're eating it maybe they're not they're throwing it back like everyone's giggling about oh i don't want to get it <laughs> and like yeah you know but <laughs> like you get all the fun stuff and then you're not struggling with like the waiting but we'll say there's a huge caveat to this and i was i was talking with my wife about this i was like you know, because i'm like obsessed with like potentially having my son wind if he wants to do these things like i want to introduce him in a way that would maybe like make him want to do them more right yeah at the same time i'm like i never had that like no one like coddled me into it and like yes i discovered it late in life but like everything's been difficult like learning how to deer hunt has been like extremely difficult for me because well I'm learning how to do it on my own with like no mentor and like no support. And like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, you can do research and stuff, but like finding deer is not, especially when we're on like public land. It's not like I have like a farm that I can walk over to and just like blow away deer that are eating corn. Like <laughs> not an easy thing to do. And like, you know, the, I guess my, here's my, here's my, here's my problem with like the, Oh, take them off for half an hour. If they don't catch anything, like it's okay. Like that's not what's fun about fishing it's a part of it. Like I enjoy catching fish. Like every time I catch a fish, I'm a little bit surprised. I'm like, oh, what? I'm like, yeah, that's great. But like, and maybe this is my personality and everyone else is not like this. So take this for what it's worth. But like, to me, some of the, like, I don't look back on the, on the times where we like just caught fish and I'm like, that was the best time. Yeah. That's a part of it. But like, we talk about the times when we just got hosed like but had a good time just as much if not more 
than the times where it was just like a bonanza. Like, yeah, I, I look back on like this, like, I don't know what, I don't know what specifically it is, but like, I enjoy like to your point, the puzzle of it. And like sometimes just catching that one fish and solving the puzzle for that day, putting the pieces together and being like, dude, I figured it out. Like, dude, sometimes the one fish. Yeah. yeah but, so, the one fish oh, days are good days. I remember, being at, I remember at the cottage, it was like 90 degrees. Cooch and I were at the cottage. We had a cooler. We were just drinking beers and trying to catch fish and could not. I, I was in my honey hole, could not get one, anything, every size, nothing. And then I did something I've never done before, put a drop shot on a white plastic, unweighted hook, just like with like a four foot trailer. There's no, I, I have no idea why I did that. Caught <laughs> the biggest smallmouth bass I've ever, like, not, not, not the one I've ever caught, but pretty damn close. And definitely the biggest one in the cottage. Yeah. And that was, probably, I think that was the only fish I caught that day. But dude, I was like raging because I was like, oh, I figured it out. <laughs> or I got really lucky either way. But dude, I mean, like, yeah. I'm, I, me personally, I'm going to, I guess I have a little, there's a, there's a little bit of like, there's a little bit in me of like, no, maybe I'm just going to take them on like an hour and a half excursion instead of a 20 minute excursion. And like, no, an hour and a half or whatever is not that long, but it's long for a kid. And maybe like, maybe they will pick up on the fact that like, yes, we're fishing. Yes, we're trying to fish, catch fish. Yes, that's the goal. But is that really the goal? Is I mean, it's, goal? it's, I want to. Spending time with your kid too, right? Yeah. yeah, it's being out of doors. It's getting experience. It's learning something. Like you, like you may not realize it, but like every time you have a crap day, like you're learning something. And like to me, dude, that's where it's at. And like that's what I want. Whoever's with me, ultimately, but really in this case, talking about kids, like oh, that's what I want my son to pick up on. Like I want him to understand that like there's a lot more to be gained than entertainment from catching fish. Yes, that's where it starts. Yes, that's absolutely part of it. There's so much more out there though. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think of it as like, as a family, you might go for a bike ride or a hike or you go on a trip or like families would go to the ice cream store or whatever. But like, you could also just go fishing, like you said, for like an hour and a half. And I mean, to to your point too, like, yeah, it's not always about just, just plugging them, just smashing fish. Um, I, I remember a lot of the one fish days. I remember a lot of the close to one fish days, like that crappie day when we were ice fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you get that one yeah. monster surprise, not even necessarily a monster, but like a surprise catch in that case, it was a monster to me, but mm -hmm. you know, like that I, I kind of live for those freakouts <laughs> where I'm having a struggle of a day. And then like, there's 15 people around me and I just stand up holding a fish in the air and screaming. That happens and, to me like once a week. I don't know. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That, I, I, I'm surprised when people don't do that. <laughs> like, like if people catch a fish and they're just like, oh, cool fish. And they toss it back. I'm no, just like, here's, what? that's here's wrong. What I, here's what I dislike though. When you have to be the person to clap in someone else's crowd, that's just the worst. <laughs> when somebody's <laughs> pumped and all their friends are like, that's weird. And you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this guy was like bluegill fishing on my lake and he caught, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like a 45 inch pike. Like just what? biggest, fattest pike. I could have ever imagined a record and it bit a worm on a bobber. <laughs> He's like, I was just bluegill fishing. And this thing came out. <laughs> His like girlfriend or wife or whatever was there. And she was like, yeah, well, that's cool. And <laughs> he reeled it in on like an ultralight rod. And I'm just like, this is insane. <laughs> and like my daughter was with me and I was like, come here, come here. You got to see this. this He's is like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Dude, I was like that. I took her over and we looked at the fish and like he had it on shore and I was like, this is amazing. And I like high-fived him. I was like, good job, bro. Like that's, <laughs> I wish people would do that to me in public. Like that's awesome. Sometimes I, I just power slide on my knees and just like hold up the fish. <laughs> I and, usually like, everybody's I like, this guy's weird. <laughs> I definitely crumple into a puddle. I remember I was, I was at a, in the Grand Rapids, um, way below the dam and like no one was catching Jack. And I remember reeling this like gigantic walleye and like it was going nuts and i was on shore i like i, I just like happened i got lucky i'm reeling this like huge wall in and i'm like oh yeah dude and then it, you know it's like very full like it, it when you don't know how to like hold the fish we should do an episode on like bringing fish in by the way when you don't oh, yeah. know how to hold the fish like you hold them too tight and like that's when they freak out and get floppy well that's what i did and i'm on shore right so this fish flops and i drop it because it like bit me and I'm like, yeah. oh, shit. and so I drop it. And then like, I picked it up immediately, but like some guy walking by has 
nothing to say about me catching this awesome fish when everyone else is like bone dry. And he's like, bro, you almost dropped that one. I'm like, do you want to die? <laughs> like, <laughs> I like stared at him and I was like, really? Oh, uh, we, we should, we should do, well, we'll definitely do an episode on just like rules of the water. Just, just like how to be a, not a shitty fisherman, uh, to other fishermen, how to, how to share to do, need to teach those waters. People. We need to teach people the how etiquette. to not only ask the question, you catch any? <laughs> How's it going? Okay, okay, that is, that is, yeah, okay. That's my least favorite thing of all time. Especially when you're on the river and you, like, keep passing people, uh, right? And you're just, like, catching yeah, around. Catching yeah. any? Catch <laughs> but they don't know that all the other people asked you. So, I mean, it's, like, they, um, they just, they don't know what to say. They, they don't know, know how to interact. But in my head, I'm just like, shut up. I need to be like the Joker. But the card I hand them, it doesn't say like I have a laughing syndrome. It just says like, if you ask me this question, I'm going to punch you. I will, I will literally throw You can keep you. that card. You can keep it. <laughs> you, you can keep that. I got more. I got more. <laughs> All right. No, so for, for sure. That's etiquette. But uh, well, let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's wrap up this portion, right? So this is the, this is the official wrap up of part two of 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 uh the the beginners the beginners. are you obsessed yet <laughs> yeah, are you obsessed yet? so you know get out there and try man just get out there and do it part two the end of it is basically you know there's kind of like three stages of it in, in stage I mean, to me i think that last final stage is you know you're finding what you really like and it's because you tried everything you got out there you tried stuff and you're like you know what this is what i like to do and maybe it's everything maybe it's one thing whatever and then i think that last piece is like you're you're literally just trying to introduce other people and like watch them enjoy the, that piece of it, right? Sure. Um, it's the conservation piece. It's the river cleanup piece. It's the show your nephews and nieces how to do it. It's the teach your kids how to do it. It's like bring your friends in, like that whole thing. And like, you know, make fish meals for other people with like things that you've caught, right? Dishes or whatever. Like that. That's I think that's kind of like, you know, that's that's the last piece of it. Yeah, for sure. Well, spring spring oh yeah well all right so let's do let's do this let's do this um every episode from now on we're going to kick it off with what paul and i have been doing for outdoor stuff so that could include camping fishing hunting um it's going to you have no choice i mean for sure so uh we could we could finish this episode with this uh because we're not gonna we're not gonna record again until next week because the kayak episode is gonna be really long <laughs> i have a lot I of think, things to add. I don't think every episode can be two parts but that one may be broken up that one's gonna be big uh well this first episode was two parts what are you talking about <laughs> every episode can be two parts I guess. Here, here's the thing on the first episode we said there's gonna be 100 episodes what we meant was 50 episodes 50, <laughs> 52 part episodes <laughs> get ready uh it's an anthology man it's an anthology um all right so let's let's do this so we'll do uh real quick short 90 second answer or less what have you done with outdoor stuff this week and then we're gonna set up uh what our spring adventure goals are so we're two to three things you really you you have to have uh or or achieve or do this spring uh in order to feel good about yourself <laughs> If you're not, if you're not measuring it, you're not working on it. Yeah. If you don't set goals, like, uh, yeah, I mean, I totally get, sometimes I just walk out to the water, but most days I walk out to the water and I say, I want to do this. Uh, sometimes it might be fish a new bait. Sometimes it might be like catch one of those damn giant pikes on my lake that are so mysterious. Uh, some days it's, you know, just world record trout. Yeah. <laughs> some days it's every day every day i'm just like world record if but i'm in this tiny lake and i don't catch a 44 inch peacock pass i'm leaving it's like am i even trying you know 44 inch peacock <laughs> oh, shit. um all right so i i'll kick this off so this week uh i fished once it did not happen that day and that was okay it was like super windy it was like as windy as it was when we were ice fishing mm -hmm. and i was trying to cast a brand new bait caster trying to dial this thing in so you can uh, just picture that right there uh i ended up figuring it out which is cool but which one was um, it? it's the cryus by six gill uh i got two for one on that deal and yeah they, they do a lot of buy one get ones i got a couple of their rods the rods are decent reels i don't know yet it feels like for mine to come in that's fine <laughs> do you do you do you want the other one? I have got two. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> end of this episode. <laughs> Gotta go. Um, 
No, so like I, I fished from the bank, not my favorite way to go, but you know, I packed one tackle box and I was like, we'll go one tackle box, one spinning rod, one bait casting rod. And it was like the new rod and reel setup. So like, let's try and figure this one out. Cause that's all I had. Mm-hmm. Um, so played around with that threw some drop shots, threw some jerk baits, uh, square bills and, uh, oddly enough, not the Ned rig, but, uh, some Texas oh. rig, uh, didn't jig, should have jigged. going to go back and do that later, but yeah, some typical spring baits that work for me and they didn't work. Uh, water is like the ice was still on the water. So like it was yeah. melting and receding, but it was on the far bank, which is the fish stock bank. Like they're always on the far side of this lake. The well, public side is so left. heavily pressured. What's that? You got four days left to keep pike. I mean, yeah, I'm going to get the boat out there. Um, but yeah, bank fishing, not my favorite thing to do. Uh, but you know, it was, it was fun just to get out there, get the line wet. I mean, that's, you know, one of my favorite things to do is just be able to cast. I'll practice cast in my backyard and feel good about it, you know? Um, but I did that. And then today ordered a whole bunch of stuff for the kayak. So I've got a whole bunch of like build outs coming up on burly fishing on the YouTube channel. How many sneak peeks can you do in one episode so far? I think we're at three. I, I, I'll keep going, man. I'll plug it again and again. But yeah, I ordered the uh, the power pole, uh, the micro pole for the kayak. I got a new battery system that I'm pretty pumped about. I got the uh, groovy landing gear by Boondocks, which is going to be a life changing, man. I won't have to flip my boat to stick the wheels and scupper holes anymore. It's going to be insane. I can't even... I can't even. <laughs> 100 people have no idea what we're talking about. It's perfect. Oh, they will, man. Yeah. Uh, Burly fishing on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> what did you do? So, I want to preface this by saying I have a young child. Congrats. I, yeah. My, <laughs> Sorry. What's the response my, for that? <laughs> my, simultaneous unbridled joy and crippling sadness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I meant condolences. <laughs> Just say it at the same time. So, congratulations. <laughs> so, I have limited hours, but I will say this. So, went uh, got a mutual friend who's going to Barbados. Oh, damn. Yes. All right. Aaron A. A. Ron is going A-A-Ron? to. A. Ron? He is going to. Shout out to the boy Cooch. Yeah. You know, he is going to Barbados soon. Um, and he's going to do some flats fishing for Bonefur. I know. Stop. So, he has a nine foot nine weight. I think it's a nine. That's a nine way. It might be a 10 foot either way. I think it's 10 foot. Um, Big so we boy. went, yeah. So we went and we got him a reel. We upsized his line. So we got him some 10 weight line and then we got him like a shit ton of backing. Um, oh yeah. Those things will run. Well, and you kind of need to know where you're at. Cause like 70 feet, you'll probably stretch that. That's, I mean, half that's going to be in the water at least. Yeah. So it's like, you really, you know, if it's only, yeah, I mean, you need that. So anyways, um, we got him set up. That was actually pretty cool. So we went, we get, he went with the lamps and guru. Um, I kind of wanted him to get the speedster, but he went with the guru. So I think he saved like, he saved a lot of money, but I was kind of like, dude, you got to get the speedster. I don't know what you're talking about. I, don't, I, know. I don't think a lot of people do. I know it's a Point vision nerds. <laughs> So he, so he, but anyways, so got him a reel. That was pretty cool. Dope. But took the boy with us and he, you know, wanted to touch all the fly fishing stuff, which is cool. So everything he touched, <laughs> I bought. And then <laughs> $10,000 later. Um, <laughs> then, three new rods. Yeah. And then I did, I did the, uh, the REI dividend drop today. So I went and got some base layers for this year, which I'm actually really excited about. Oh yeah. You were talking about that. Yeah. That's good. I'm, a little, I'm a little bit obsessed with that. So, um, that's, that's pretty much it. Red. All right. So spring season resolutions. What are yours? Okay. First and foremost, this is like number one. It's not even close. Turkey. I'm getting okay. it. This is, this is year two. Last year was year one. I did it all wrong. We can go through the. Learn, can, learn from the mistakes. <laughs> literally everything, not everything wrong. I got good at calling. So what I need to do this in the upcoming week is um, two things. One, I need to get back on the mouth calls because I hadn't dialed in last year. I need to get better. I've been practicing extensively my crow calling, which is like a shot call for a turkey where you get on the blah, 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 blah. So oh. that's a big one. Well, you saw it. We did it. I did yeah. it in the, at the launch. So on the tail end of the ice fishing trip, we, we saw a shit ton of turkeys and you were calling at them. Strutters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And then, so that's one, got to get a turkey this year. So my, I think May, uh, March 16th um, is when I find out when my hunt week is because uh, I'm going to get my draw results. And then the other huge one for the spring is scouting for goose spots to go goose hunting. I've got like four lakes, actually two of the ones that we went on this year. Oh, nice. um, so I'll be using hopefully combo of like going out and fishing and then looking for good places to put blinds um, and then marking them on hunt X. And then the last one, and this is the, the fishing related one, small month on the fly this year. Last year, smashed purple two two flies. Like did a huge, tremendous amount of my catching. So, purple craw, no, purple woolly bugger, weighted. Oh yeah, super super bright orange and black craw, murdered. And then I caught one of the biggest smallmouths of the year on a sexy dangerous. And so I have been tying those with the deer here. Um, nice. So those are my those are my three for the for the spring. Awesome. Uh, mine have a lot to do with the kayak build. So I think, mm-hmm. which, which is inevitable at this point, cause I just bought all that shit. So, uh, pretty much is like finish the kayak build out, get that baby on the water and test her out. Um, I want to do, that'd be number one. Number two, I want to get back on the grant as soon as humanly possible. Um, I've seen some people fishing out there and I'm just like jonesing for it. Uh, what you you look pumped about something what we're back <laughs> all right so yeah um fishing for some some pike and some smallies on the grant would be amazing uh and then i guess three gosh i did just mostly number two a lot <laughs> with the new <laughs> gear with the new setup um yeah i guess i would say three what i could go after i don't know man just some some big all right so that that's what it is i want to I Port, portland fly fishing portland michigan <laughs> what are you talking about we're gonna meet at portland state gamer and we're gonna fly fish for smallmouth because i oh, was okay blasting them there last year with nate we'll do all right so that that's good that's a good number three because i just i said in this episode a a terrible sad thing which is i fly fished once last year uh so yeah let's get back out and fly fish spring spring small moss is like next to bluegill with a three weight is like probably one of the most fun ways to do it oh yeah dude very weightable very uh, very accessible public land smashing to just to be able to wade again would be amazing that that would be number three because i couldn't wade at all i went out so many times last year attempting and just almost dying every single time like all of my good spots you have unwaitable a you, have waiting, you have a waiting belt like a floatable one or like just a regular like belt one that you can like cinch up and like traps air under your waist uh yeah i do okay yeah i I got one uh so i subscribed to a box post fly (laughs) for a little bit post fly sent one um yeah they they send some nice stuff for sure uh i stopped subscribing to them though because i couldn't fly fish at all last year i was like cool i haven't been out at all this year and i've spent uh i don't know 300 bucks on your box so i'm gonna just take a break (laughs) we have a hundred dollars in neon cross that i can use oh sick (laughs) <laughs> I, I I mean, I have a ton of flies. Uh, like, they're still in the original packaging from that company. I haven't even organized them yet. We're going to go get them all dirty. Yay. All right, let's do that. So, yeah, hopefully you guys, you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you learned something here or there. I know uh, we went through a ton of stuff. But, again, we are talking about basically part two of how do you really get into fishing. But at this point, how do you, how do you turn that into a a healthy obsession? Uh, and how do you bring others on board? How do you, how do you say one of us in the most gentle way possible? Uh, and I think we had some good things in there, some, some golden nuggets. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed, uh, if you did leave us a comment and uh, a review, if you will, wherever you're seeing or, or seeing, you're not seeing this, If you're seeing it. You're on YouTube watching Burly Fishing. Thank you. Like, and subscribe, uh, for the podcast though, if you want to leave us a review, wherever you're listening to your podcast just drop us you know one or two or maybe mostly five stars would be great uh and a little comment there too because that helps us 
uh, curate the content. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us what you want us to talk about. Uh, you know, and between cool. the two of us. Most <laughs> importantly, tell us Most what important. your last meal is going to be. I'm oh yeah. I remember. And then <laughs> on, on top of that, I want to know what your uh, spring checklists are. What's on, what's, what are, what are some goals that you guys have for the spring? I want to know what they are. And if you guys have any ideas for us, things that, you know, Jeff obviously doesn't have a number three. So if we really need to fill that in, let us know what Jeff's number three should be because we're probably missing out. You just we're, gave in, me the number we're, three. In we're in Michigan. April 27th is the keeper opener for a ton of species. Keep that in mind. But seriously, mm-hmm. what should Jeff's number three be? Give me, give me a number three. Hashtag what's, what's Jeff's number three? Send them an email. At, but I will be honest with you. If you don't tell me at least one item on your plate, for your last meal, I'm not going to read it. I'm not, I can't even read it. Delete. <laughs> Delete. Wow. Uh, so yeah, if you guys want to, if you want to talk to us, if you have any questions, thoughts for the show, et cetera, uh, or for the channel on YouTube, uh, just email us at Burley's fishing. It's Burley s fishing at gmail.com. I know Gmail, <laughs> they didn't have any Burley fishings left. So it's Burley's fishing. This is like, like, like I'm, like I'm going fishing. Like he's fishing. <laughs> Anyways, so it's Burley's Fishing at gmail.com or you can just message us on Facebook. Again, it's facebook.com backslash Burley Fishing uh, or at Instagram or on Instagram at Burley Fishing uh, or just hit me up on YouTube. So all sorts of places to reach us, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the episode and we will see you guys next week. Well, we won't see you because it's a podcast. <laughs> we'll talk to you next week. Bye.